Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tommy Blankenship. I'm the safety coordinator. I work out of the Office of Program Accountability. And today we have been welcomed by Major Rafour here at Leon Detention Center to talk about workplace safety. And uh, I've been here many times, and Major Rafour and I have known each other for a long time. And this is a well-run facility like, like all of them are. And Major, when I was driving up today, I was thinking about the different things that go on in a detention facility. And we have uh, 21 different facilities in the state. Uh, each of them you know, basically do the same things. We have a capacity of about 2,000 youth that we serve. And the most important thing we do in our department is to take care of the youth that, that, that we serve. And when you start thinking about that and you start thinking about a detention facility, we do a lot of things here. Your staff is, is, is all encompassing of things. So if we really thought about it, we, uh, we do education, we do medical health, we do mental health, uh, we do transportation, moving the, moving the youth around the state with places that they have to be. Uh, we do maintenance, all the different things that we do in every department have to be maintained, very important uh, department. And uh, besides food service, can you think of any other things that, that I've left out that you may do here? I think you've covered just about everything. Um, like I said, we, we also do appointments if, if the kids need medical appointments, dentist appointments, we cover that as well. Okay, great. So would I be wrong in saying that we, we have a hotel, <laughs> that we have a laundry, that we have a maintenance department, that we have a transportation department, that we have a school? Uh, we, we do a lot of things here and everything we do is designed uh, for the well-being of the youth that we serve. And it really starts at the top with Secretary Daly and the support that we get from Assistant Secretary Fossler who's very concerned about the youth and for you, Major Reform, for what you do and for inviting us in today. And this is the first of what we hope are going to be a series of workplace safety videos that are designed for these different departments. And today what we're going to do is we're going to focus on food service. Now, if you have a big family, you know it, it takes a lot to prepare a meal, but in a facility like this, it's operated 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week, it goes on and on, and we're serving a lot of meals to, to a lot of youth, and it takes a lot to go with that. So we're gonna go in the kitchen in a little while, and we're gonna talk with our dietitian, who is Vanessa Lemire, and she has an awesome responsibility also because she's setting up a diet for each one of these youth, not everybody, but for each one of them. Some may have allergies, some may be overweight, some may need to gain some weight, so they get special treatment, and which goes right through to your staff and the staff here at the 21 facilities that we do. And I can assure you, because I get a chance to travel around the state, and I get a chance to intermingle with uh, all the youth that we have in the classroom and the cafeteria and recreation, different things like that. And we all know that childhood obesity is major epidemic proportions in our country. And I can tell you that from my observation that the youth that we have in detention, even on beyond that in the residential, are not obese. They're, they're very, very well looking uh, youth as far as weight and things like that go. And so I tried to scratch my head major to figure out what was going on. And I found out by being inside the, the cafeteria and seeing the meals go out and seeing the youth eat them and just taking a look at them that they're getting very well, well balanced diets and no fast foods, you know. So uh, another thing that we're doing with them through this program that goes through, you know, Vanessa and our dietitian and the food service people is we're developing habits for these youth. And everybody that works in food service is taking a hand in that. And we may have 2,000 youth across the state that are learning good habits, they're getting healthier, and every person that works in food service should be very proud of that. So we want this video to concentrate on workplace safety, which also means safety of the home, because if you get hurt at home, you can't come to work, obviously. And uh, we want to take a lot, of, a lot of pride in that. And we want people to start thinking about accidents, because accidents can happen, and accidents hurt. They physically hurt, they hurt the family, they hurt the department, and what we want to concentrate on are things that we can prevent. And the way we do that is we want people to start thinking about safety. Nobody wants to get hurt at work, but how many of us actually plan to have a safe day? So that's one thing that we want to talk about, and I'm sure that Vanessa's going to talk more about the diet, dietetic part of it as we go through it. But Major, we want to move into your cafeteria, your kitchen if we can, and, and see what they've got going on in there. 
And uh, we're also going to be working with, with Kenny Nixon. And Kenny has a, a, a long career in food service, and he's a real professional, not only at preparing the food, but his kitchen is run very safely with all the cleaning chemicals and the floors keeping clean and, and the different techniques that they do. And that's what we're going to explore today. So if it's okay with you, Major, we'd like to take a tour, go through your kitchen, and uh, uh, show everybody you know, what they should be proud of as to what they're doing. Kids, what our hope here is that our youth will have will develop healthy eating habits, even if they don't have them at home. We enjoy uh, cooking ourselves, we enjoy serving our youth, and even find that sometimes some of the food that we do cook reminds them of family in that home. So we here at uh, the uh, United County Juvenile Attention Center want to make sure that we give uh, the best to our kids. First thing we want to do is make sure that our food looks good. The second thing we want to do is make sure that it smells good. These kids eat with their eyes first, then they eat their nose and then their mouth. So the second thing is to make sure it smells good. The last part is just taste good. So we're here to make sure that they have a wonderful, nutritious day. So now we're going to just walk through a little, a little walk through on some safety. So the first thing that we do when we walk into a kitchen is 
we make sure that we're wearing the proper attire. So you're a better example of a proper attire than I am. So we'll, we'll go through that first. Okay. Um, some of the things that we, we have to make sure we do is, first of all, wear the proper uniform. Uh, proper uniform for us is white shirt, black khaki pants, but most of all, important are the shoes. The shoes have to be non-slip because uh, slips and falls happen all the time. If you have non-slip shoes, it's a 99% uh, chance that you will not ever, ever fall at all. And, uh, my shoes are, are great. I like the blue form. We have some people that like flat forms. They're all different kinds, but non-slip are the most important. Uh, the second thing we're going to do when we come in is go ahead and get our hair nets, but we don't want, want our any kind of hair in our food. There are people who are walking around, um, checking out and inspecting food. We want to make sure that whoever's preparing the food, that nothing falls off of us in, uh, into the food or any water or ice or anything. So before we do anything in the kitchen, we want to make sure our hands are clean. So we're going to head on over to the hand washing sink. Okay, show way. We want to do is wash our hands. The reason for this is to come in and we touch you know, various doors and keys and things like that. We want to make sure that there's no bacteria or anything on our hands, so we want to wash those first. Also, washing hands, we also have to make sure that we wash our hands as we come in and out of doors and in preparing between meals. Now, we still also have to remember we even wash our hands even if we have to, even if we have to put gloves on. Now, we're going to head over here to Denise and see what she's doing. Now we're over we're watching Denitra cuts onion, cutting onions. Now as we know, we have to have gloves on when we uh, do any kind of preparing any kind of foods. One thing about cutting uh, is that we want to make sure that we have a cutting glove on. You want to have that cutting glove on your left hand. If you're right-handed, you have uh, if you're left-handed, you have it on your right hand. You want it on the opposite hand that you're preparing. Also with that, we put a latex glove on the bottom, we put on our cutting glove, and then we put another latex glove on top. If you notice, she has one, a cutting glove on both hands. Extra safety and security is no problem. And so what, why we have the latex gloves on is to make sure that if there are any kind of, any kind of food particles or anything that get in the uh, gloves, we want to try to prevent that. But we also want to make sure that we uh, wash these uh, daily as we use them. Now, we focus on our next step, which is looking at proper uh, washing attire and washing materials. Now, for who we see right now, we have Mamie Davis. Mamie, how are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Would you stand up just a moment, please, so I can show our people what we're wearing? Sure. Mamie has a black vinyl uh, apron on. This is a dishwasher's apron, which helps uh, prevent water from dripping all over the place, plus it keeps her dry. The safety tip from this is that instead of our normal clothing or apron we would wear, water normally would soak into that. And so as we walk back and forth, we would track water all over the place, which is a surefire, uh, a surefire way of uh, Coming, coming into an accident. So we have the apron here, so everything that she has falls right back into the sink hole, doesn't get on her at all. The next thing we want to do is make sure that she has the proper gloving in case the water is too hot. As we know, we also have to make sure that we have an excellent setup for our washing sink here. We have a three compartment sink here. And the way standard three compartment sinks are set up, we have our wash station first, which is with your soap, your rinse station, which is your clear water, and your sanitizer station, which has a chlorine solution. Now, on the chlorine solution, one thing we have to remember most of all is that we, there's strengths to it. We have to test our chlorine solution and make sure it's not too strong because we don't want to get anybody sick and make sure it's not too weak so it kills all the, if there's any other bacteria. How we measure that is by what they call test kits. These are test kits. Now, there are two types. We have a test kit that is a yellow in origin and there's one that's a purple in origin. For us, the yellow in origin, all we do is fill up our sink with water and a sanitizer solution. Once we get it to the level that we want, we dip the stick down in it, wait 30 seconds, and if it turns yellow, it's within the proper reading. Now, the purple ones, what we want to do with those is, we stick these sticks right inside the water, and your, your test strip comes out immediately. It's either going to be a dark, dark purple, if we don't want it that way, a light, light purple, which is too light for us, as I was talking about the sanitizer, we want it between 50 to 100 parts per billion. That is the standard that is set, set by the Department of Health. There are a lot of other safety and awareness that uh, are in a rest restaurant or any kind of food service. Um, the one thing I, uh, I like to do all the time is we always talk about preparedness. Mm -hmm. The one thing I like to do is prepare almost anything. You know, I'm going to interrupt you for a second. Speaking of safety awareness, I really like the way that she carried her knife and then she put it on the side instead of putting it in the sink to where Ms. Davis may have 
you know, gone to wash a dish and she could have cut herself if there was a knife in there hiding under the sun. Yes, that's excellent of Denitra because we know that if a, a knife is in this water, when a person comes over and they go to wash dishes, they don't understand or even know that it's in there. And when they reach their hand down in the water, they can cut themselves, causing themselves a bodily harm, injury, or even have to go to the hospital. So we want to make sure that we do the same thing Denitra did. Put it on the counter so everyone can see it, not in the water. Everything you would need if you uh, got a cut or injury or anything, or even if you got something in your eye. All, all of our uh, facilities are required, and all restaurants and businesses are required to have a first aid kit uh, for use for everyone. And we also want to make sure that they're updated uh, month to month by a uh, uh, nurse that we do have here uh, at our station. But what I like to do myself is I also make a daily inspection when I come in the next day because if we're gone that night and someone cuts themselves and they're written, we're ready and available right here, they might use this first aid kit. So remember, check them daily too. All right, so you got your first aid kit. That's really great. And now I'm wondering what you might do in the case of a fire. Do you have a fire plan? Uh, actually, what we do, we have all facilities that are required to have a fire plan. And so what we do is we also have monthly fire drills. We have a fire plane which is posted up on our wall and we practice those uh, pretty much once a month. We also have our fire extinguishers in various places for us to use. And during the fire drills, we also want to make sure that everyone understands where the major exits are. And so what do you do in the kitchen to prevent fires so that we don't even have to worry about a fire plane? Well, most common fires in the kitchen, as we know, are from grease fires, okay? Or over preparing food or putting too much in pans. So what we want to make sure that we do, uh, in essence, is make sure that whenever we're uh, using any kind of products, oils, or anything, make sure that our pans are washed out on the outside, they're clean on the outside. The second thing we want to do is make sure that we don't, do not fill our pans up too full, and also cooking in medium or low flames. One of the biggest common denominator for uh, high uh, fires, especially cooking fires, are that people have put too much food in them, they crank it up too high, and then they walk away from it, which causes many fire accidents. Well, our goal is to prevent all slips and falls. Mm -hmm. As we know, uh, water or spills are the number one causes of uh, uh, safety accidents or falling. The first thing we know most of all is uh, what we saw mainly did was bring out a slip and fall sign to warn everyone that there is a spill in place. The second thing is simply cleaning up, up in a timely manner. As quickly as you can, go ahead and get the spill cleaned up. Uh, and if you can't get to it right then, you can also ask for help. But sometimes we are very busy. It's so easy just to ask for help to be able to help it out. Mm -hmm. Any, anything like this right over here will help prevent falls. You know, I also noticed that your mop is clean. Yes, that's another thing, making sure yeah. that, that we have the proper equipment. We want to keep our equipment in uh, great condition. If, if our mop heads are degraded in any, any kind greasy. of way, or greasy and have dirt in them, we're actually adding to the problem. So we want to make sure that they're, they're clean in a timely manner. If they get too old or anything, just discard them and get a new one. Yes, Vanessa, the turkey smells like it's ready. I think we need to check it. Let's check it. Okay, Show me the way to the turkey. All right, we're going to go ahead and check it out. Now, as we check out turkey, we were cooking here, okay. and one of the most common safety features about cooking is, is uh, two things. One is making sure that we put the proper amount of food in the proper size pan. A lot of times when we have big things like turkeys or something like that, we, teach, we tend to put them in deep pans at 8 inch. And this can cause back injuries, even slips and falls, or even spills. So what we did, instead of putting it in an eight inch pan, we split it up into uh, two four inch pans. So I'm just gonna basically show you how uh, we did it. 
Now, right down here in our oven, one of our second features that we're looking at is uh, our oven is very, very low. And so our oven is very low. And so our, our turkey is in here. So in order to pre prevent back injuries, what we want to do is we want to lift with our legs. Now I'm going to show you the proper procedure. First, what we're going to do is we're going to squat down, come to the level of the turkey. We're going to pull it, out, pull it out as far as we can. Then we're going to take the turkey, pull it out, pull it towards, stand up with our legs, then place it on the other, on the stove. After we do that, we're going to go ahead and close our oven back so we don't want to walk by and hit their knees. The same thing with the second one. We're going to come over here, open our oven up. Mmm, smells good too. We're going to bring it to us, stand up with our legs, also place on the stove, closing the door. Now the last part of this, uh, which we commonly miss, which is mostly Vanessa, once we bring it from the stove to our serving area, sometimes, sometimes it's still too heavy. So there's a number of things we can do. One thing we can do is uh, use a utility cart to uh, put place it on to take it to, to the serving line. The second thing is if it's too heavy, hey Vanessa, would you give me a hand with this? Then she would give me a hand. All right, so we made all that turkey and then we realized that we need to make some mashed potatoes. The only problem is that the mashed potatoes are up on the high shelf, which is a common problem in the kitchen, right? Can anybody do about that? Yes, Vanessa, it is. One of the most common um, accidents is reaching up for high shelves. So that's why we have to make sure we have the proper material. You will find that we have an OSHA ladder, which has a handle on it, and it has three steps so that when you grab your product, you will have something to hold on to. Now, a lot of times what people do is they won't use an OSHA ladder or they might use a milk crate or any other objects. And this, uh, this really, really is bad for us because you can fall and even break something. Reaching up high, sometimes the product is too heavy. So as they start to pull it down, it can, and they can lose their balance or they can fall altogether. The third thing is if it's way too heavy, like the big cans that are, you could drop it out of your hand and drop it on your foot. So we want to make sure that we have the proper things in place. Ms. Davis uh, showed us exactly how it should be done. An OSHA ladder, walk up, grab hold of the handle, come back down with your product, and we're finished. That's the safety, safest thing I've ever seen. Well, this brings us to a close. Once again, Major, thank you for allowing us to come in today. And uh, ladies, thank you for, for helping and Kitty for your your, uh, your tour and Vanessa for you and everything. And uh, we want everyone to uh, to remember that workplace safety is, is everybody's everybody's job and everyone has to take personal responsibility for your own safety so that we all can be safe. And I hope this is helpful to everybody. Uh, you know, we appreciate everything that you do and, and believe me that you benefit from, from everything that comes out of this kitchen. And uh, be safe and good travels.